Squadron Commander, we've got new Rogue One details on our tail. Let's break them down on Nerdist News. Unlike the mystery box J.J. Abrams buried The Force Awakens under, the first Star Wars anthology flick, Rogue One, has been bleeding rumors since it first went into production. But today, they got the jump on us. EW has released some major Rogue One details and a brand new cover, so let's check it out and get to speculating. First, our fearless leader, Jin Erso. Mon Mothma told us in the trailer that she's been alone since she was 15, and though she seems like a total badass, we wondered why the Rebel Army would want her to lead such an important mission. Well, as it turns out, it's because of her fighting skills and knowledge of the galaxy's criminal underworld. For Jin, completing this mission means clearing her ledger and making up for her checkered past. But it seems like, as rumors had claimed, there may be a personal element to Jin's story, too. Mads Mikkelsen is indeed playing Papa Urso, aka Galen, and as this article refers to him as an Oppenheimer type, we're guessing those murmurs that he's the man who designed the Death Star were correct. According to EW's report, both the Rebels and the Empire want his knowledge, so we're gonna go out on a limb here and guess that the real reason the Rebels are having Jin lead this mission is because they know that she'll do what it takes to rescue her dad. The question is, does she know that that is what she's doing, and does she know that that's where he's been since she was 15? Will there be a brutal, I am your father moment? And another thing worth noting, Kathleen Kennedy referred to Jin as a Joan of Arc character. Getting compared to a martyr isn't usually a good sign for someone's mortality. Sorry, Jin. Chances are, you dead. But hey. You don't think the Rebellion would really just send a noted criminal with no formal military training to captain their single most important mission so far, do you? Of course not. No, Jin will have a rebel babysitter, the straight-laced but still rough-and-tumble Cassian Andor. As an intelligence officer who has to spend every single day trying to outwit the frickin' Empire, this dude sounds world-weary. But maybe Jin can help him learn how to let his hair down. Moving on to the rest of Team Rogue One, we've got a Don Quixote and Sancho Panza-esque, their words not mine, pair named Chirut and Baze. Chirut is a blind warrior monk who isn't a Jedi but still believes and practices their ways in a time where nobody expects magical heroes to come and save them anymore. And Baze is a blaster-wielding demolitions expert who couldn't give less of a shit about the Jedi, but knows that this mission and the faith in an unseen force is important to his friend. And of course, we've got Alan Tudyk's mocap droid, K2. He's a former Imperial bot who's been repurposed to serve the Rebels, and like Jin, he feels like he got a lot of past wrongs he's got to overcome. That said, it also sounds like he's got a touch of everyone's favorite droid from Knights of the Old Republic, HK-47, since he doesn't give a shit about what you think, doesn't care about human-cyborg relations, and doesn't fully check himself before he says and does things. This dude sounds like a blast. But the most exciting and fresh reveal is Forrest Whitaker's character, Saw Guerrera. Does that name sound kind of familiar to you? Then, you must have paid really good attention to season five of Clone Wars, where Saw and his sister were part of an insurgent guerrilla force trained by none other than Anakin Skywalker. Or, you read Star Wars Bloodline, the Leia-centric novel that dropped a reference to Saw Guerrera's partisans while discussing the Rebel Army's terrorist tactics. See, Saw is an extremist who's done some questionable things in the name of the Rebellion, which is why he warns Jin and her crew about what they could become, and that's because his bloodthirsty tactics are the result of his sister's tragic death during the Clone Wars. Saw is a complicated guy, and his extremist ways make him operate separate from the rest of the Rogue One crew, but in line with their mission. Sounds like this movie is chock full of shades of gray. I should make a joke right there, but I won't. But what about the bad guys? Well, we've got confirmation that Ben Mendelsohn's Imperial villain is in fact named Director Krennic. He leads the brand new Death Troopers and he'll play a part in some pretty tense palace intrigue within the Empire as he jockeys for the Emperor's favor against his enforcer, none other than Darth Vader. Yay! That's right, guys. Just like you've totally assumed, the Vades <laughs> is back. Our guest is Director Krennic is going to try and impress the Emperor and supersede Vader as the Chosen Son, so let's just say we wouldn't be surprised at all to see this dude get force strangled. And that's it for the big character reveals, but what about the tech, y'all? Well, confirmed, those weird-looking AT-ATs we saw firing on the squad in the trailer are actually AT-ACs, which stand for 
all-terrain armored cargo transport. Now, what kind of cargo could they be transporting? Well, EW doesn't say, but spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, I'll give you five seconds. There is a pretty cool rumor out there that the Empire is mining kyber crystals, the crystals that focus the energy of the lightsabers in this flick. But what purpose? What high-powered energy beam could the Empire need big ol' kyber crystals for? And check out those TIE Fighters, y'all, on the EW cover, except that those are actually TIE Strikers, a new kind of Imperial ship that's faster and has more lasers than a TIE Fighter. Why haven't we seen these used before, then, like in Empire Strikes Back and stuff? Let's just not worry about it. But what do you guys think? Are you pumped for the return of Saw Gerrera? Are you into these plot details? Are you glad to see Vader's return? Let's discuss. Hey, Dan. Hey, Jess. What's happening on the Dan Cave today? The 100th episode spectacular. Woo! Yeah! Yay! But guys, I'm not about congratulating myself. I'm about celebrating other people. So that's why this week on the Dan Cave, I have a summer movie guide for indie movies specifically. There's so many amazing ones, especially coming out this weekend. There's Hunt for the Wilder People, Neon Demon, Swiss Army Man, Wiener Dog. I think there's one more, Free State of Jones. There's so much good stuff coming out and it's all there in the Dan Cave. Fantastic, and guys, make sure you don't miss our friends over at Geek and & Sundry and Smart Girls Charity 24-hour live stream this weekend. They're raising money for the Muscular Dystrophy Association. It starts this Friday, June 24th at 7 p.m. Use the hashtag LiveUnlimited and we will see you then. But before that, Dan? Exactly. For a less altruistic hashtag, please tweet at Kyle Hill, hashtag BeanFacts. He knows so much about legumes and he wants to share that knowledge with you. So use hashtag BeanFacts at Psy underscore file. Hi, Kyle. <laughs>